every step further into the journey, the path gets more interesting. There's windy corners, tricky forests, and tons of temptation. And signs that make you believe in magic. The endless why is the reason we keep climbing. It's the many questions, investigations, and strange encounters on our spiritual path. Welcome to The Endless Why. Hey everybody, thank you for tuning in to Self Mastery. This is going to be pretty darn interesting, and the reason why is there were some old readings Jordan's done. One was called Fantasy Island. Now, I don't know if you remember this awesome series, and it was just a really cool show. And she did this read, I really dug it, and then I said, you know what, let me ask you about this. I want to bring it onto the podcast. Not in an endless why section, but more or less more for entertainment purposes. So, Jordan, now that I got you on the uh, horn here, tell me about that read. What inspired you about it? And I could give people the backstory on Fantasy Island for anybody that did not see the series, but it is on Tubi. You can watch it on Tubi right now. It's pretty cool. And I have been watching it. So, just to get my feet wet. That's awesome. I didn't know that you could actually find Fantasy Island reruns anywhere. Yep. That's great. It's on Tubi. Cool. We don't have Tubi in Canada, so. Oh, my gosh, you guys. But you do have maple syrup, and I guess that's all that matters. (laughs) That's right. (laughs) And you got your two. We got two. uh, We got our A. And we got, yeah, we got lots of good stuff. But we don't have Fantasy Island reruns. And and for those of you who appreciate uh, psilocybin mushrooms, they have them at every corner (laughs) store. (laughs) <laughs> Welcome and that's to probably Canada. why they don't have Tubi <laughs> and that's probably why they don't need Tubi because all you have to do is just sit and stare at the road <laughs> <laughs> you guys are already on your own fantasy island I guess and all of a sudden everybody wants to be Canadian <laughs> I know including me so uh, just so you know I am uh, I'm thinking about the Great White North a lot well, Think about it. Beautiful women and legal psilocybin. Who wouldn't? All right. Well, I'm packing. I'm leaving on a jet plane. Speaking of fantasy island. Yeah, that <laughs> would that be a fantasy? Imagine me knocking at your door. It's be like, oh hi. It's like, who are you? Shut. Lock. <laughs> Listen, dude. I I'd be like, wait, did I wish for this? <laughs> <laughs> this is a fucking nightmare. <laughs> this is not the way it's supposed to be. <laughs> Which is often the case with Fantasy Island, actually, isn't it? Bottom line is Mr. Rourke. Um, He was the lead guy there, and it was like, uh, you know, be careful what you wish for, or, you know, you just, you think you want something, and then boom, it flips itself, and that's what he loved to do, I think. He was a trickster, right? So, what's what's your vibe on that? Why did you even just start, you know, start to do that? The reason why I chose to do a reading on Fantasy Island is because I was doing a video on the full moon in Scorpio last October, in October of 2022. There was a full, uh, I'm sorry, there was a new moon in Scorpio. And I was, the thing about Scorpio is that it rules the eighth house of the Zodiac. So for me, that's always about what's hidden in your subconscious what you don't actually see, things from your past that influence your behaviors. And, you know, it's a deep psychological house. It also rules things like money and sex and fantasy. So it made a lot of sense for me. For some reason, it just came up. Like I was like, okay, well, what's the vibe with this moon? And I got Fantasy Island. Because also new moons are meant for manifesting. So when you're manifesting in the Scorpio energy, you better know what lies below your surface. Because whatever it is during that time that you're manifesting forward is coming from the subconscious. And that's very much what Fantasy Island is about, in my opinion.
obviously the the actor is uh Richard Ricardo Montalban is that how you say his name yes the debonair Ricardo Ricardo yes. I I have to say his name like that and you know all during Fantasy Island there's various times he like looks at the camera and raises his eyebrow and I every time in my mind I'm like Ricardo I am Ricardo <laughs> so he was basically supernaturally powered I think in in that series and but he was in charge of making their fantasies real or whatever how did so that's how I saw it. And each fantasy is kind of like an Aesop fable. Are you are you making yes, fun of me, on, Ross? Sorry, go on. Riz. <laughs> Some people are so touchy, you know. But he... <laughs> All right. I'm he... sorry. Please proceed. So anyway, this trickster mentor, Mr. Work, is uh, very rarely he very rarely allows his guests fantasies to play out the way they expect it to, and it's he d usually does it to teach them a lesson or bring up a problem in their life. Yeah, I can get into the why of Mister Work for sure because there's a couple of ways of he's a very intriguing character. He's one of my favorite characters in television history. Part of it is that we can deal with Mr. Work as a separate being. He is a man who runs some kind of island. We're not really sure his story, where it came from, how did he end up there. He has a godlike quality. He's always wearing that white suit. So it kind of represents a clear vision and a clear conscience. I find it exhilarating each time they come to two. New people with new problems, new hopes. New fears, they are so mortal. So for me, the character of Mr. Rourke is two things. It could actually be God, universe, the source, working with you to confirm what your fantasies are in a sense. But what I kind of, for me, when I watch Fantasy Island, both Rourke and Tattoo are you. And they work in your subconscious manifestations out to the universe. Work represents the higher self and tattoo represents our more lower physical applications. The things we crave for, you know. I love tattoo because he's not afraid to be um, overindulgent. Boss, what is it? It's for you from all of us on Fantasy Island. You see, we realize that sometimes the ones we love the most are the first ones we take for granted. It's a token of appreciation and respect for you, my friend. Open it. Every episode happens with like 14 beautiful Hawaiian women stumbling out of his room in the morning. And his main thing for Tattoo when he discovers his power is what can I do with it? He ends up, you know, various episodes. He's like a painter in one and somehow he gets all these beautiful women to pose nude for him. He's all about the food, the sex, the money, the fun. He doesn't understand, right? Whereas work represents the kind of higher part of your subconscious, the part that knows that your fantasies are a little bit of trouble, the part that knows if you go there, it's going to show you maybe things you don't want to see. And that's very much Scorpio as well. Yeah, and Mr. Greenwood, I already know your past completely, or you wouldn't be here. You are rich and alone, wife deceased, children grown and gone. Your only interest in life now is the past. Specifically, reliving a brief but beautiful romance which took place in London about 30 years ago during the war. Yes. Two days that I never forgot. Francesca. Does this sound crazy? Oh, I make no judgments. When I accepted your check for $50,000, I accepted your fantasy. And you, you found a, a girl who looks exactly like Francesca. You, 
You briefed her. All details have been taken care of, Mr. Greenwood. Francesca, the London flat, the pub where first you met, they're all here on Fantasy Island. Everyone knows his or her role. You're a magician. Some call me that. One of the things uh, he's always known for saying is, smiles, everyone, smiles. Before every episode, he would discuss with Tattoo, uh, you know, those are the Joneses. This is their first anniversary. She's not sure she really loves him anymore. And da 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 da. So he'll, I guess, describe what's going on to the Tattoo. And he's always asking questions. It was a beautiful setup for each person's fantasy at the beginning of the show. But he always started out with smiles, everyone smiles as the guests are coming off. They're being handed their champagne and also their, uh, what are those things called? In a oh, line? a lay. Those yeah. lays. Mm -hmm. yeah. They always had the best looking drinks at the beginning mm -hmm. of Fantasy Island. I'm like, I want to go there just so I can drink out of a pineapple. Well, that, <laughs> and, um, I think being on a plane floating on water would be kind of cool too, you know? <laughs> Oh, for sure. Well, here's the thing. For me, Fantasy Island exists in your own mind. And also for me, Mr. Rourke and Tattoo and that whole cast of characters is you and the universe. And what it takes is you work through your own manifestations and fantasies. The thing is that, of course, we're not going to know where something is going to lead us until we actually have the opportunity to do it and see so it's all about kind of like being able to live out what you think is best for you, what you think your ego is asking for, basically, so you can see the other side of it. Mr. Roark, your words remind me of my own when I used to greet each new safari. <laughs> Why don't we just skip it? Skipped. Let's get down to business. Your fantasy is that we try to kill you. We are ready. Perhaps. Were you able to secure expert hunters? The ice bucket, uh, Mr. Alley. <laughs> nothing at all, nothing at all, just a little trick. Expert enough, Mr. Henley? So he's a good shot. But that doesn't prove much. Is he a professional hunter? Professional? Um, no, I wouldn't call him that. I wouldn't call any of the three hunters I've hired to kill you professional. I'd say rather they were, um, dedicated. So for me, one of the definitions of ego, one of my favorites, is that it stands for evading God's oneness. And, and Mr. Rourke is often, to me, seen as the character of God. So what he really represents is what happens when you think your ego is the higher power in any situation. Why can't I have a harem full of women? Why can't I be famous for a week? Why can't I have all of this stuff? Well, you can, you can. All that he is showing you is that it's never what your ego thinks it is because there is a plan in place and it is for your highest good. That's the God element. So, in, in, if he was to represent a card, Mr. Work, what would, he, what would uh, the card be? The high priestess. Totally. Because the thing is, That's when people cool. come off that plane and, Mo and Ricardo Montalban gives the camera his famous eyebrow, or the other favorite expression of mine he'll do, he like narrows his eyes like he knows something nobody else does, because he does. He already knows what's going to happen during these fantasies that he's setting up for everyone. It's, he doesn't exactly orchestrate them to happen, but if you think about Mr. Rourke as your magic, your, your power, you kind of do already know what, what you're asking for is going to lead to kind of thing. She never called him Grant in front of me. Well, life goes on for the living. So soon. Madam, I conduct... Arrange, if you will, these fantasies, but I am not, as the saying goes, responsible for their content. Excuse me. The path is inside you, and it's always just beginning. We are forever grateful to share in the exploration with you. We'll see you soon.
Thank you for listening to Self Mastery, the practical art of tarot and astrology.